Hello everyone, this is Tristane for another StarCraft video. Today we're going to explore a question. It's going to be about AI's behavior regarding building selection and upgrade assignment. So why are we going to do this? As I was playing my ladder games of StarCraft as Zerg, I noticed a mistake that often occurred during my games. I was, let's say, controlling a harass force on the map. And then I decided I quickly wanted to research burrow on a hatchery or lair, where I then wanted to make queen or upgrade to an upper tier. So here's how it went. So I just selected all my hatcheries. Then I did, say, overlord speed upgrade or burrow upgrade. Let's say burrow. And then I would control my army again, and then I would go back to my main, let's say, and I would want to mutate into Hive, but then I couldn't because Lair, the Lair was researching Burrow. Same thing ha happened with hatcheries at some point when I wanted to, say, make queens, but Burrow was being researched or Overlord Speed was being researched. So I thought, okay, well, the maybe a fix for that would be to just manu manually select the hatchery I wanted the upgrade to happen to. But then I thought to myself, well, maybe if I knew how the, the AI behavior happened regarding the upgrade assignments, then I wouldn't have to manu manually select any of them. Also, maybe I could select some of them. I, I could Maybe I could select one manually in the wireframe without having to look away from my army. But then how exactly are these organized? Which hatchery? is which if i select this one what hatchery is going to, is it going to be what's the rule for organizing the wireframe and the selection so that's basically the reason why i decided i wanted to start asking some questions about how this works so just a bit later during the same period i tried to dig some information about that subject on his stream Lambo mentioned the same problem, but wasn't sure of how the AI proceeded in that regard. That already triggered a bit more my curiosity. I then made a thread on Reddit, all things Zerg. Some people had bits of explanations to my question, but others objected to those explanations. So there were discrepancies in the understanding that people had of how this worked. I even asked the question to sort of directly on a stream. But he had a different hypothesis than the one that Lambo came up with. I then made some research on Liquipedia on the topic, but without success. Even though my research so far hadn't given me clear answers, it did help me define the parameters of the problem and also come up with sub-questions that needed to be addressed and some hypothesis about which factor could influence the AI's behavior. It also confirmed me that there seems to be a lack of knowledge in the community in general regarding that topic, including possibly even pro players. Hence the reason for this study. We've loaded up a custom game against a very easy AI on the map Everdream, where we have only left one assimilator to the opponent in order to be able to resume from replay as much as we want, if need be. We have built five hatcheries, five, five hatcheries and one lair. One base has two hatcheries, this one. And the hatcheries were built in the following order. From bottom to top, and then from left to right in this sequence. Some evolution chambers were also built. Actually, two were built, but we're going to have to remake this one. So we're going to use our army and destroy these. And then we're going to remake some new evolution chambers. I need to make sure that I build these in the same sequence that I did for the hatcheries. We're trying to be as thorough as we can here. There you go. All right. So from bottom up, the three evolution chambers were built. Now we've also created an army which is assigned to a control group that was created for the instances where we will need to select something else than hatcheries or the evolution chambers. 
So regarding methodology, for this experiment, it is worth mentioning we will be using inductive reasoning. That is, in this case, drawing a general conclusion from a given set of experimentation results or extrapolating a general law from such a set. This is also called a bottom-up type of reasoning. Inductive reasoning is opposed to deductive reasoning. That is a top-bottom type of reasoning where, for example, an outcome or another fact is predicted according to a fact that is already known to be true. For example, because a hatchery costs 300 minerals, I know that if I order a drone to create one, when my resources in the bank are below that amount, I know that nothing will happen. In this case, I can do it because the resources are sufficient. That is a deduction, and it should always be correct as long as the premise, that is the rule that we stated, the cost of the hatchery, is true. In an inductive type of reasoning, which we will be using here, certainty is always out of reach, no matter how big the sample size for your generalization is. You can only hope to be closer to certainty, but never 100% sure. So now, let's proceed with the experiment itself. All right, so as we've already stated before, there are many sub-questions that need to be answered because before we hop onto the upgrade question, which, which was the initial one. So, first of all, what determines the order of display for buildings of the same type in the wireframe? So, the wireframe is this zone right here. Some people also like to call it um, selection window. We're going to select buildings and we're just going to notice which building are placed where. So we're going to make sure that we select buildings of the same type and of the same tier. So we're going to select multiple hatcheries and we're going to go again from bottom up. So hatchery one, we're going to use shift and we're going to add a second hatchery. And now a third hatchery. Now the question is, which is which in the wireframe? How were the buildings added? Well, just from looking at the um, larva display, I can already determine that this one is in the left, this one is in the middle, and this one is in the right. But let's double check it. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the middle one, and we're going to click on the portrait and see which one is given. So as we can see, this hatchery, which, which was selected second, was added in the second. It was added to the right of the first hatchery. We're going to repeat the experiment again. So left click on the first hatchery, second click, third click. We repeat the same experiment, click on the portrait, and we notice the same result. Let's modify the experiment a little bit. We're going to do the same order of selection, but we're going to check with another hatchery if the rule is held true. So we click on this hatchery on the left, click the portrait. And as we can see, the first hatchery that was selected was displayed to the left. Now, perhaps this rule could be generalized to units. Let's check it out. We're going to make a similar order of selections for the roaches. So roach number one, number two, and number three. If we click the middle roach, we can see that the second roach to have been added was selected. We can repeat the experiment. One, two, three. Roach to the right of the wireframe, roach to the top. So the rule seems to be consistent. Selection is happening always from left to right as units or buildings are being added. So this rule is important to us for the rest of the experiment. Because now we're going to check if that rule also applies. Um, actually, before we go with the control, no, yes, we're going to start with the control group now. Okay, now let's see if what's happened here will also happen with adding buildings to sub, uh, control groups, actually. So the hatchery comes first, 
as we did before. And now what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, steal our hatcheries outside of the control group we've used so far. And now we're going to repeat the same experiment, but this time we're going to be adding the hatcheries to, the, to a single control group, that is control group two. So shift two, click another hatchery, shift two, click another hatchery, shift and three. Now, if we recall the control group, what's going to happen? Will the hatcheries be displayed in the same sequence as they were added to the control group? Let's check. So if I click the left hatchery and click the portrait, we can see that once again, the rule seems to apply. Buildings are added in the sequence that they were added to the control group from left to right, just as they were, just as they were for um, the first rule when added with the shift selection. The computer seems to remember the order of selection and is consistent with always displaying the buildings in the same sequence. Let's repeat the experiment. Let's go to our army and go back to our selection control group. Hatchery, click the one to the right. If the rule applies, we should be getting the upper hatchery. And that is the case. So we can see that the same rule applied for recalling control group, adding control groups, uh, adding hatcheries to the control group. Okay. So this seems to be consistent. Let's do it just one more time to be sure a bit more quickly. So we add, let's say we change the order of the hatcheries selection. So shift P with the top one, shift two again for the middle one and shift two for the bottom one. Go back to the army. Now, if I click the first hatchery, oh, something happened there. That is very interesting. Actually, I wasn't thinking that we would get a different result. But yes, yeah, sometimes you have to play with the different factors to get different results. So it does seem like adding buildings to the control group in a different order didn't change the outcome. Actually, it changed the outcome relative to what we did earlier. So perhaps the order of construction of the hatcheries is the thing that is determining in what order buildings are being displayed. We will have to double check and to verify if the same rule apply with, applies with units later. Okay. But that's very interesting. So we've got some, a confounding factor here that we played with, that we integrated, and it changed the result. So perhaps order of construction is what matters here. Okay. Let's repeat the experiment. So as we can see, by clicking on the left hatchery, I would have expected to be brought to this hatchery, but in fact, this one is the one that is being selected. Okay. Hmm. So perhaps the order of construction is what matters. Let's do the same thing with the evolution chamber. We remember that we build the evolution chambers from a bottom up sequence. So let's see if we get the same result as we did for the hatchery. So we're going to add the top evolution chamber, the third that was being built, to the same control group. We're going to crush the control group of the hatcheries and use the same control groups for the evil chambers. Okay. So now we add the evolution chambers. And now we're going to recall our army, go back to our evolution chambers. And let's see, we've added the evolution chambers to the group from top to bottom, but we've built them in the other sequence from bottom up. Let's see what happens. If I click the left evil chamber, if the rule of the order of production applies, then normally we should end up going to the lower evolution chamber. And that is the case. This rule seems to be consistent. So the order of construction is what seems to make a difference. All right, that is a very interesting thing to know. 
Next question is, are there subgroups created when a layer is associated to hatcheries? So, so far, we've only added hatcheries to our control groups without the layer. What happens if we add the layer? So what we're going to do is we're going to use the same control group, but we're going, going to crush the former control group, the evil chambers one. So control two, shift two, shift two, shift two. Okay, we're gonna limit ourselves to four hatcheries and there for now. We're going to go back to our army. And now if we click, if we recall our control group, hitting the two key on the keyboard, this is what happens. The layer is placed at the, hand, at the end and we can notice that the mutate into layer ability is active. You can notice that the, there is a darker square around the layer. That is because a subgroup is being active. Now, if I want to use to um, actually switch the subgroup, I will use tab. And as we can see now, the layer is an option in the production since we've got the hatchery selected. All the larvae the larva are still um, available for all the buildings. As we can see, 4 plus 7, 11, and 14, and 19. But in terms of abilities being displayed, we can see that the subgroup is what determines what upgrades are available and which buildings will do what. So if I want to quickly, quickly um, do a burrow research, but I don't want it to be done on the layer, then I'm going to need to tab through the buildings. OK, so that's another question I had. Next question. If all buildings are of the same tier, and none of them are already acti actively researching an upgrade or building a unit. What factor determines which one will ensure the research? Okay. So, so far we've seen that there was a pri priority um, for buildings that were built first when it came to the wireframe. Now, what I'm wondering is, will a similar rule apply to determine which building should receive an upgrade. Now to conduct this part of the experiment, we're going to remove the layer for, from our current control group. So we've added these hatcheries from top to bottom. Now I am not absolutely certain that um, this is what we did last, so we're just going to do it again. We're just going to reselect uh, the hatcheries and add them back in the control group. So we're going to steal them away at first from our control group. And now we're going to re-add them. So what we're going to do is we're going to go top bottom three and four. Okay. Now this is my selection. If I go back to my army and I decide, okay, well, let's, uh, let's research burrow which of the hatcheries will receive the upgrade. So far, I'm expecting the lower hatchery to be assigned the upgrade. So let's use pneumatized carapace. There you go. So as expected, the hatchery that was built first in the group is the one that received the upgrade. No matter how I ordered the um, addition of the buildings to the control group. Even though I added them top bottom, it was the hatchery that was built first that got assigned the upgrade. So that's um, something we could repeat in a slightly different fashion to increase the validity of our results. So let's steal away once again the hatcheries from our control group and let's use a different order to add the hatcheries to the control group. Let's use the middle one and add it first, the top one and add it second, and the third one and add it third. Right here, going back to the army, selecting the hatcheries and launching an upgrade. Once again, as we can see, 
the hatchery that is the most to the left, that is the hatchery that was built first among the selected hatcheries, is the one that gets an assignment to upgrade pneumatized carapace in this case. Now, let's vary the experiment again just a little bit by using a different upgrade. This time, let's use mutate into a layer. Let's change up the order again. So I'm going to add this one first, this one second, and this one third. Going back to the army, selecting the hatcheries, mm -hmm. and evolving the layer right here. As expected, following the same rules that we've determined so far, the first hatchery to be built was assigned the upgrade. Great! Now we could check the same thing for the evolution chambers. Let's add the evolution chamber to the group in a, in a random order. And let's check if the same rule applies again. So this time we're going to use Evolve Ground Carapace Level 2. Technically, if the rule applies, this evolution chamber should be the one receiving the, the upgrade. And that is the case. The evolution chamber that, that was built first received the upgrade. All right. Now let's see if the same rule applies regarding unit production. So we're going to produce three roaches and we're going to rally them in a set pattern. So the first roach to be produced will be rallied at the bottom. The second roach to be produced will be rallied in the middle. And the third roach will be rallied, will be rallied at the top. Okay, so the three roaches have been produced. Now, let's see what happens when we add them to a control group. Will that follow the same rule as the buildings? So if I add the first roach here, to the control group, and then this one as, as second, and then this one as third. Logically, if the same rule applies, this one should be the one at the bottom. Hmm, actually no. This one was created first. But this is not what happened. So this one should be at the left, but that's not the case. Hmm. So perhaps our first hypothesis was wrong. Perhaps in this case, in the case of units, units are being displayed in the order in which they were added to the control group. So let's remake the experience, keeping that in mind. So we know that this one was created first, second, and third. Now let's add them in a different pattern. Let's add this one first. So we're going to crush the former control group with control two. Now shift and two and shift and three. So let's test the, let's test the second hypothesis. So if this one was added first, then it should be this roach. And actually it isn't. This one is the first, this one is the second, and this one is the third. So what's going on here? Huh. Now, let's just see if this is actually consistent. If there is some consistency in the displayed grid of the unit. So if I hit the recall, uh, the recall key for this control group, and I click this rush, the left one seems to be the middle one, the middle one seems to be the bottom one, and the right one seems to be the top one. I'm going to write this down to make sure that I don't get mixed up with this. Right now, what we're looking for is a verification as to whether there is some consistency or not in the um, displayed sequence of the units. So we've got our army control group and going back to the roaches. So let's see if this is consistent at least. So left should be middle one, that's right. Middle one should be bottom, that's right. And right one should be at the top, and that's right. Let's repeat the experiment. Left is middle, middle is bottom, and right is at the top. Okay. Hmm. 
So at least there is some consistency. So every time I recall the same units, they get displayed in the same sequence. But now I'm having trouble to determine whom will end up in the same space. Or perhaps which larva was created first. Oh, that would be so good. Oh, that would be so good. Okay, I'm getting it. We're getting it, boys. Okay. Okay, so we're going to test something. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's kill all the, all the larva on this hatchery. And let's mutate the roaches as the larva do spawns. Now that would make a lot of sense. Okay, so now we're going to mutate the larva as they spawn. So this is the first larva. You're going down. Second larva, you're going in the middle. And third larva, you're going up right here. And we're going to move these guys so we're not confused. There you go. First larva, second larva, and third larva. Okay, now we know that this roach comes from the first larva that was spawned from the hatchery. This one from the second, and this one from the third. Okay, let's add them. So we're going to use the same logic that we used before. Let's add this roach first and crush the former control group. One, two, and three. Now, if the same logic applies than the one for the buildings, if I click on this roach, it should give me this roach. What the hell? <laughs> okay, I just, I don't get it. I just don't get it. What is this? <laughs> what, what, what determines? I don't get it. So if I click on the one on the left, the one in the middle of the of the screen is the one being displayed, that one being selected. That was the second one created. Wait. And this one, the first larva that was created, ended up here, but it's displayed in the middle of the wireframe. And this one was the third one, and it is displayed at the top. This one is consistent with our rule, but this one isn't. So what the hell is going on? <laughs> I am just confused. <laughs> okay, so I repeated this experiment a couple of times, uh, building four roaches this time. And I tried out different uh, combinations with the hatcheries. And it seems like um, there isn't actually a consistent organization of the units added to the control group. So yeah, it seems like uh, the order is actually random, but it is still consistent uh, from when you recall the control group. That is, so if I add this one first, this one second, this one second, third, and then fourth, um, you can see that the same clicks give the same results. It, that is, these four roaches are always displayed in the same order, even though I go from a control group to another. Like this one on the right is always the one on the left. But the order, uh, the, the behavior of the AI regarding which will be placed where, in what order, that seems to elude me, actually. It could be a totally random number that just determines where they will be placed in a group. So yeah, that's pretty much it for me. So I will be writing down the conclusions in a document that will be available through Reddit and below the video on this um, on YouTube. So um, if you guys have any critics, and actually that would be very nice because in any experiment, uh, one should be open to the critics and also uh, if you guys have any other factors in mind regarding what could affect the mechanisms that we've talked about, then please let me know and perhaps I will do another video if, if necessary, if anything uh, shows up. So let me know if this was useful and I'll see you guys soon.